Hello everyone, in this video we're going to train a model to beat uh, the game called WWF WrestleMania the arcade game, more specifically the 7 matches of the continental mode with the Yokozuna character. Also we're going to use stable baseline as opposed to original baselines that I used in the previous videos. As you may already know, stable baseline is a fork that is more modular and has cleaner code than the original baseline. So if you want to directly see the model going through all 7 rounds, I've put a timestamp in the description down below, so we can skip directly to that if you want. As for the setup, since I already went through this um, in the previous videos, uh, I won't go through it again, but I'll still do a, an overview. So on the, I recommend a fresh install of uh, Ubuntu 18.04. And you just need to install these packages, obviously the Python 3 and Python 3 pick packages. Uh, if you don't want to generate videos, you don't need to install FFmpeg. So just copy-paste this, this command. Uh, for the Python packages, um, so OpenCV Python and URL, uh, Jim Retro because, uh, Jim because uh, Stable Retro and Jim Retro uh, are based on, uh, on OpenAI's Jim. Uh, TensorFlow 1.14, this is important because TensorFlow 2.x uh, is not compatible uh, with the, the previous versions. So we really need to install this version. Uh, 1.11, 12, 13 might work, but I highly recommend this one. This is the one I, I test with. Uh, baselines, baselines, you don't need it if you uh, don't need the stochastic frame skip wrapper, which makes the, the training uh, more stable. We'll see more details about that uh, later. But I, I recommend you still install it. Uh, stay, obviously stable baselines and Pygame. Pygame is just to, uh, to display uh, to have a nice display of the of the game, and then finally, uh, stable retro. This is my fork of Jim Retro. Since uh, Jim Retro doesn't accept any uh, any new um, uh, PR request uh, pull request, uh, every new game or platform needs to to uh, to to be added into your own forks. So I did my own fork, and I did the WWF game. So uh, you need to sync it if you want to, to follow uh, this, uh, the following examples. So basically you just uh, CD into the, the, after you clone it, you just CD into the directory and uh, install locally of this command. So for Windows users, I still haven't made uh, a video on how to set up stable baselines on uh, Windows uh, and TensorFlow also as well. Uh, so. Uh, if you have questions about that, you can ask in the comments down below. It will help me make a video faster. Uh, if you have any setup problems, other setup problems, uh, please feel free to ask in, in the comment section. I'll gladly help if I can. Another point is that this video assumes you know the basics of reinforcement learning, but I will still go through a quick refresher. Uh, you can skip it. I've put timestamps in the down below so you can skip that section if you already um, if you don't want to hear it or you already know so basically the as opposed to explicitly coding the the agent behavior so for example uh, if the enemy is near uh, punch or if the enemy is uh, about to jump on you from the side of the ring then uh, run away uh, if you're outside the ring then go back in the ring etc uh, or the, if the enemy is running away, then run after him. Uh, so this is all explicit behaviors that you can code, like in a classic AI for for most computer games. Not all, but most computer games. As opposed to all that, reinforcement learning. You don't in reinforcement learning you don't tell the agent what to do, but you tell if the outcome of what he does is positive or negative. So the way it works is that the agent at every frame, like a player, will output an action. And by action, we can uh, refer to this uh, Super Deep Mind paper in 2015, uh, which a lot of uh, future work was based on. It's a highly recommended read. So this is a CNN model. So it takes as uh, input uh, the, the image of the game as opposed to the internal state and outputs the, the action. So by actions, it outputs like literally the, 
the like a player like the, the actions on the gamepad so in this case it's a Atari gamepad but in our case it's a Sega Genesis so you have more buttons but the principles are the same so it's gonna put uh, an action uh, so if we go back to the our diagram so it outputs the the action on the gamepad and the obviously it affects the environment so if you punch your character will punch and the, the environment will update to the to the next frame and obviously the the input state, the input frame will change. There's really going to be a new image, most likely the, an image where your character is about to punch or is beginning to punch. And it's going to output the reward and it's going to feed that to the agent. So how does it output a reward? That depends on your algorithm and how you implemented your environment. Uh, but basically, uh, you want your uh, reward function to be as simple as possible. So in our case, it's going to be, we're going to see more details later, but uh, when the enemy uh, loses health, then the reward is up. When you lose health, then the reward is uh, negative. So what that, what, what that does is that it tells the agent, then, okay, if you punch the enemy and the enemy loses health, that's good. So in that same situation, uh, you're rewarded, uh, you, uh, the agent is rewarded to... Uh, to um, the, the agent, I mean, the agent is encouraged to to uh, repeat that behavior. And uh, if the the enemy punched the agent, and the agent loses health, and uh, then the 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 reward will be negative, and the agent will be discouraged to do the action it was doing. So if it was doing nothing, then it will be encouraged to do try something else. Well, obviously, it's gonna find out that it needs to block or run away to uh, to make the reward um, non-negative. So it repeats the process and if you repeat the process long enough with enough examples, uh, you're gonna get an agent that uh, that is able to maximize the reward environment and beat the, the hopefully beat the, the, uh, the opponents. So what exactly it outputs, how it outputs this, we're going to see in more details later. But actually it doesn't output directly the action, but it outputs a probabil probability of the action. Like for example, um, punch, but 80% chance that uh, pressing A or punching is, uh, is uh, the right move. Uh, and then 20% chance that, for example, uh, moving up is the, the right move. And then... It outputs probability like this, and then the the algorithm, no matter the what the algorithm you use, what you're gonna do is gonna take the rewards and uh, update update the the agent in a way that the next time it's gonna it's gonna output a higher probability for the action that give a positive reward. Like for example, if punching was in that situation was bringing a positive reward, then it will. It will increase the probability of the of the, of the punching button, and if blocking was was avoiding a negative reward, then it will output the probability of a blocking instead of doing something else. So, but we're going to see a bit more details about that later. It's going to make uh, more sense. So, basically, that's the the, the basics of it. So uh, next step is that uh, we're going to look at the details of the integration because uh, I changed it since the last video. If you watched the last video about uh, about this game where uh, I showed you a simple integration, I, now I improved it a lot uh, to fix uh, some problems. So I will show you that. So this is the integration tool. If you don't know how to use it, I made a video about it previously, so I will put the link down below. So if you watched the, the last video about uh, this game, this wrestling game, uh, you will, you might uh, notice I added a couple of variables. First, I added the, the extra enemies variable, so uh, for the for health variable, because the first round you just you just have one enemy, but for the for later rounds and uh, the last one you have up to three enemies. The same time and uh, that needs to be um, read from ram because the reward function needs to take it take them into account if you punch these extra enemies you need to gain points if you don't then you're gonna uh, the, the agent's gonna have a much harder time figuring out how to beat um, that uh, that round uh, also i did the number of rounds that was one 
by the player by the agent because um, if you want to train state by state like we're gonna do later as opposed to make it run through all, all the whole game you want the the, um, the session to end when the either the enemy one or the player one also updated the um, uh, the the done function with it so basically uh, like I said before it was just the the number of rounds won by enemy if it was a two then the the session ends but also if the player wins what I did is if the player won um, those rounds uh, you ended two and here on top um, before it was just the 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 enemy health like you gain points when uh, you reduced the health of the of the enemy uh, but I did the other enemies too and also I did the your own health uh, because if you don't have your if you don't uh, lose points if you lose health then you uh, the agent's gonna have a harder time to learn how to block uh, so that helps the agent learns uh, this this new line helps the agent learn some uh, uh, defense mechanism the other thing I did that's a mistake I made before so uh, if you go into uh, data I think no not data so here uh, this basically crops the image uh, to uh, to its native resolution 256 to 224 because this game uh, is uh, internally rendered as 256 by 224 if we don't crop this this way you get the black bar on the on the side because it uh, it takes uh, the full image like 320 uh, of width so it would still work but since you downsample it to 84 by 84 you get less the, the AI get less resolution to to uh, less details to work on and uh, basically it's it's not enough like 84 by 84 is already uh, very little so uh, you should get the full screen so that's why you need to crop it and all this you can uh, it's on it's submitted uh, on the um, Stable retro, so you just need to sync my my fork, and it's gonna work. Next step is that we're gonna see an example of how to use a stable baseline, a very simple example. And after we're gonna move on to the more complicated one to, to see how we can beat uh, the wrestling game. So first thing you need to do to do is uh, import retro. After that, uh, you need to import the. Um, the PPO2 algorithm from stable baseline. So import PPO2. Next is you, you import the CNN model. So similar to the, the DeepMind paper we saw early, earlier. Import CNN policy. And next, we're going to import a couple of wrappers that we use to um, for environment, like for example, to, to downsample to 84 by 84 and have a stack of four frames. So you can just copy this. So it's a day wrappers, but it works for retro too. So warp frame, that's that's what down samples. Clip reward is just that to make sure that the reward doesn't go uh, overboard because that can really screw your the agent. Frame stack. So we're gonna add a couple of constants to make it uh, more clear. Are clearer. This 
So we're going to test with um, uh, with a game that's already integrated. Uh, that's uh, and also that that is free, so the there it um, it comes with the ROM. It's Air Striker. Let me find it. State is the game state because, for example, you want to start at level one or two or any specified state. Policy. Time steps is like how many time steps you want to train your, your game on. So we're going to put a very low value because you just want to test, test it. So now we're going to define our main function. First, we're going to create the environment. So nv equal to retro dot make. So we'll specify the game. And the state. And then next, uh, the, no, this this function will return the, the the environment, of course. But we need to apply the wrapper on it. So first, we apply a warp frame that down samples eighty four by eighty four. And then the frame stack, so that make that takes the last four frame. And. Uh, the wrapper that clips the reward. Okay, so once the environment has been created, you can create the model. So we use the PPO2 algorithm, but there's other other algorithms like A2C, for example. Oh, I made a typo here. It should be in caps. So it needs uh, the model is going to use type of model. Of course, it needs the environment you're going to train on, and Verbo is going to set to true. Once the environment and model have been created, uh, we're ready to train the model. So model learn and uh, we specify the total time steps. So this is enough to train the model, but we want to to preview it after. So test test model. So first, we're gonna make sure the environment is reset to the beginning of the state, and uh, we're gonna return this. This is in this case, state means the the current uh, image of the game. And then in the infinite loop, we're going to render the game. So this renders the environment, the frame of the environment. After, we're going to take, uh, we're going to request an uh, action from the model based on the state of the game. So model predict state. And after, we're going to step through the environment. So. The environment requires an action because it requires the player to, to act. 
So I'm gonna step through the, the, the environment. So and the and this environment returns a new state, of course, returns a reward for the current frame, returns a, a bool if uh, if the current session is done and we, we should reset. And info info what it returns is a list of uh, if you recall the variables like enemy health, uh, one runs, uh, etc. If you call these variables, uh, info will contains all these variables that you can use for debugging. So it takes actions. Should be okay. So if done, you're not required to do that, but if the session is done, then you want to reset sometimes you want the game to continue like if the player won and uh, you want it to go to the the next state the next level you can make it continue but sometimes you want to to have it restart the state so that looks good and we need to add uh, this thing and call our main function Uh, this is not required, but since later, if you want to um, add some multi-threading, uh, you need to add this. Um, so now it's time to run to test it. Maybe we make a mistake. Maybe not. I don't know. Invalid syntax. Okay, so. Comma. Okay, so the training works since we only uh, to train it for ten thousand frames. It will learn basically nothing, but it's enough to test it. Have a basic test. If you want a full test, it's preferable to run it in a game like Pong and uh, train it until he, he wins the, the match. So you can test really if the, the basic algorithm works. But for, a, for this video, we want to keep it short. Okay, so almost done. So now you see a preview of your, of your AI. It sucks because it's only have 10,000 time steps to, to practice. So next step is that we're going to try this on the, um, the wrestling game. Obviously, we're going to need to add a lot more features. Like, for example, this doesn't save the model. Uh, this doesn't, this doesn't multi-thread the environments. Like, we just run one environment at the same time. We want to run many ones at the same time because we want to accelerate the training. Uh, also we need features where we separate the training into states for the different states and I have a function that tests that uh, continually tests the, um, the model also to have a better visualization of the model uh, because uh, this doesn't stretch very well for example so we're gonna see all this um, now I forgot to explain why uh, we need a stack of frames as opposed to just one frame. So if we go back to the DeepMind paper, you see it's a, obviously it's a 84 by 84 image, but it's a stack of four frames. And the reason is that uh, you need to encode, you need a way to encode the velocity of the of the game. Like for example, the velocity of enemy if it's where it's moving. Otherwise, if you just have one frame, you don't know in which direction. It's uh, it's moving, and how fast. So it's helpful for it's helpful for that. So I already submitted the solution. We're about to see um, on my GitHub. So under the retro script project. So this is all you need to beat the wrestling game. So you can just uh, git clone it and uh, follow the example usage. It's pretty simple to build um, to make a model that will be, uh, beat the game. 
But I recommend you still watch the next part where I explain uh, how the code works. Because uh, if you want to have more complex behavior or uh, even more efficient models, uh, you're gonna need to modify the this code because there's uh, still room for lots of improvement that I tend to do in the, in the following months. But for now, it's a, it's at a pretty basic state. Uh, so let's let's check the the code. So first, we'll start by the the main game specific script called uh, WWF Trainer. So this is what drives the uh, the whole flow. So what it, what this does is pretty simple. At the at the core of it is a it separates into seven uh, the seven matches of the continental mode. So once the player uh, I've beaten the, the seven uh, matches, it wins the game. So we're going to train it on the very easy, very hard. Uh, the thing is that it's not just harder in terms of reflex, but the AI seems smarter and it takes uh, lots, lots, of, uh, lots more training step. So I recommend you use, uh, you start with very easy. So we define the list of states here. And then we train the model on, on uh, each state. So I'm gonna explain like uh, what model trainer is and the rest uh, later, but I just want to have an overview of the flow. So it's gonna iterate on each state, each game state, and it's gonna train it for a number of time steps defined here. Like for in this case, we're gonna use fifty thousand. This is not enough to win the game, but to, uh, to make this video shorter, we're gonna use uh, gonna use this this number of time steps. But normally. Uh, to win the game, you should use about maybe a, a million time steps per state. And after each state, it tests the model performance to see what's the, the win ratio. Like, uh, did it win 5 out of 10 matches or 8 out of 10 matches, for example? And the total rewards it got. Um, so you can see like which state he has uh, more trouble with. And after he done, he, go, he went through all the states. It's important to retest the model on all on all the states because there's a phenomenon called catastrophic forgetting. So catastrophic forgetting is that it's in RL is is where the agent unlearns what it learned previously because of uh, of the the new training. So for example, by the time he he learns how to beat three opponents at the same time for the match seven, he might have forgotten how to beat um, you know round one. Uh, for example, so by testing after each uh, cycle, you see if uh, if it still had retained the, the information. In this case, it's pretty simple. So often, did not forget the what it learned. But for more complex games uh, like Super Mario, uh, you might you might encounter this phenomenon. But it's still important to to to, uh, to test it. Uh, if, and if you're not satisfied with the testing performance, you can rerun the script to have another cycle, for example. So this is very simple script uh, at the core of it. Uh, you can make it more complex, like for example, uh, you can test the, the win, uh, the, the win percentage, and retrain on that state specifically, and then retest uh, automatically. Uh, that would be an improvement. Uh, I might do that for um, for our next video, but. For this time being, it's a uh, it still works, it still beats the game. Uh, if you if you have the um, the right number of time steps. So TensorFlow is pretty annoying. He it outputs like uh, as you can see like uh, a lot of deprecated warning message. Uh, it's very hard to turn it off. Uh, the way to do it, if you want to turn it off, is go into stable baselines and uh, add add these lines here. Import warnings. Uh, show it and filter one and filter out the warnings. It's it's really hackish, but uh, the problem is that it overflows the the output, and you the most important message sometimes get lost. That's why I prefer part by uh, the PyTorch team. They're more user oriented. That's my rent. So it takes a while to start. So yeah, it's already started actually. It's like training on the first stage for 50,000 time steps. Now it the it's over. Uh, the training is over. Now testing on the the model on ten matches. 
uh, it tastes it tests the right now it tests the model on one match at a time uh, which pretty which is not very efficient so I tend to improve it uh, later so they test on the 10 match at the same time or even more So a couple of uh, seconds more. So the win ratio is a 0 out of 10 and the reward is negative because it loses a lot of health. So that's normal for 50,000 time steps, it's like very little learning. So now it's going to try on the second state. So we're going to let it run. So let's say the training is done and uh, you saved your model and you want to, uh, to play back the model. Uh, you want to test the model. So you can use the, the model versus game class. Uh, to uh, to uh, to test the model and you can use it as a command line as well so uh, basically you just need to to uh, specify the model here and the the state you want to start with so we're going to start with the safe uh, the the first state and uh, we we'll get and uh, instead of stopping at the end of the that state it will continue the game so you can see the, the whole game So I did the, this display of Pi game, so you can see the environment, the type of model, and the number of parameters. The 1.7 million parameter model. And here, uh, as I said, I, I will explain a bit more about uh, what it outputs. So it outputs probability. So this is all the buttons of the Sega Genesis mode. Uh, and uh, for each for each uh, button, it outputs a probability. Uh, which one will uh, have the the best chance of returning a, a positive reward? So as you can see, the the model is uh, pretty strong because it's not the the one trained for fifty thousand steps. It's the one I trained for three million time steps per state. So uh, we're going to see the complete uh, run through uh, later in this video. I put the timestamps like I said before. So this is what the model versus game uh, uh, does. So it tests the model. And um, uh, so you, uh, you can use that in your, your trainer scripts. And when you use that in your trainer scripts, you obviously you want to turn off the display. So uh, you can do that. Another point is uh, deterministic. So by default, we uh, when we uh, we play the model uh, to test it, we uh, we play it in the deterministic mode. So that means the the button with the highest probability is going to be cho always chosen. If it's non-deterministic, that means it's going to sample the distribution. Which means that let's say you have uh, the up button at um, eighty percent and the block button at twenty percent, the B button. I think um, what's going to happen is that it's going to have eighty percent chance of, of uh, choosing the the up button and twenty percent chance of choosing the 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 block button. So um, so basically. What that does is that you want to run in the deterministic mode because you want to choose the best action always. But during training, uh, you don't want that because you want the you want the, the the agent to 
actually try other things because if you always try the same things it might get blocked in the in a, in a way that works in the short term but uh, doesn't work in the in the strategy that doesn't work in the long term so you want you want the the agent to be able to explore other other uh, outputs so that's why you need to run in non deterministic way when training but when uh, just testing the model uh, you can set it to true So that's use a uh, display. So display, I won't go through through it because it's not really the point of this video. But it uses Pygame and it uh, displays the the output I I, I just showed. So a PVP display. I'm going to talk about this in another video. It's for the model versus model. But here we use the game display. So it just uses Pygame and the uh, free type to to draw the the information. Um, if if uh, if you want, uh, eventually I can do a tutorial on Pi Game for this type of case. But for now, we'll skip it because it's not the the point. Uh, another the another important script is a model trainer. This is to train a model in a single state, and um, it's very similar. It's very similar to what the the stable baseline intro we we viewed the, at the beginning of this video. So. You may recognize the make uh, the um, retro dot make here, and why it's uh, more complicated. It seems more complicated than the simple example we view because first uh, we need to uh, to create the output path. Uh, so if I go to um, from example home output, so here we have the. The output path will output all the, the will output the log and the progress report. Now we don't have any much logs because uh, that's generated from the the trainer script where we turn off the verbose mode. But normally you see a log and also normally you see the tensor board. Uh, we can view it later. So this is where it outputs. So <clears throat> this creates the output path, and you specify the output uh, here. For the tensor board, and uh, here it's a bit more complicated because we need to we want to run on multiple environments at the same time, and retro retro doesn't run did, uh, cannot run in the, the same the same thread. So uh, in the same process, I think in the um, so uh, if you want to run additional retro environments, you need to run them in the, each of their their own process. So that's why it's uh, the code is a, is a bit more complicated. So first, you need to use the sub proc vec and v wrapper, and then you iterate. You spawn a bunch of environments, and then you're gonna this is gonna spawn a bunch of process sub process, and then you cannot use frame stack. You have to use vec frame stack, because this is to have like a, a vector. That this is to uh, to be able to support frame stacks, but in a vectorized environment. Or you have multiple environments running at the same time. The uh, warp frame clip NV and is uh, the same. You just add it after the the, um, the the environment monitor is to output. It's the it's a wrapper to output the 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 log info. Also, uh, stochastic frame skip. Stochastic frame skip. Uh, we didn't. Add this in the, the simple example because we don't need to. But in this case, you you can do without it. But uh, from DeepMind's uh, from uh, OpenAI's uh, paper, I saw it uh, about uh, Coin Run. I think uh, they they state that it uh, really improves uh, the performance of the of the of the training. So what stochastic frame skip does is that with a probability of twenty five percent. It might skip the first, the first action. So, when you take an action, the the agent repeats that action for four frames. Like a player won't act on every single frame; it's too fast. So, uh, the agent does the same as like it, it acts on every four frames. But stochastic frame skip is that uh, 25 percent of the of the time, uh, it's gonna skip the first, the first of the four frames is gonna skip the the input. And apparently, it makes the the but from my from my from what I tested in the the coin run paper, 
it improved the, the performance drastically so you can test that model versus model we won't see it but it pits two model against each other on pvp games like uh, this wrestling game is a uh, you can play it two players can can uh, fight each other so in this case you can take two models and fight each other i'm gonna do another video about that so that's pretty much the overview it's a pretty fast overview i know but if you have questions you can ask uh, ask it down in the description down below So if you want to see the details on the policies like the CNN policy and what policies are, are available, you can go in the stable baseline uh, project. So and uh, the policies fi um, Python file, uh, you can see where it's defined. So it's possible to define your your, your own policy in your own scripts. So this uh, I might do another video on it. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have the Impala CNN policy by default so we might do that in a future video so if you want to try lstm uh, lstm is for um, as you may know is uh, for uh, long short-term memory so basically uh, uh, that might be useful because if you um, dun, dun, dun. so if you check the um, can reduce the zoom here so if you check the manual of the game wrestlemania so you, you have lots and lots of combos try and uh, like for a lot of fighting games the same for lots of fighting games uh you got lots of combination of um, of buttons and sequence of buttons so uh lstm might help for that uh because the current model we use uh, the cnn policy uh, is stateless so it doesn't it, it treats every state as by its own as it doesn't treat a state uh, depending on what happened before so uh, so learning sequence of, uh, of buttons like this is a uh, is impossible close to impossible so for a tensor uh, tensor board it's gonna output the the tensorboard uh, file under the the name of the algorithm you use so you can use it like this tensorboard log there and then the current directory then you open it in your browser and then you get the get all the metric it logs so the the most important one is the episode reward so it's uh, pretty chaotic because uh, we train for very few steps but you get the idea uh, normally if you train for one million you get you should get a nice progression from negative to positive okay so now it's time to um, to run the model for the seven matches uh, starting with the first state so this model was trained uh, for 3 million time steps for each match. So it should be pretty good. Normally it beats the game. So Shawn Michaels is the pretty easy at the beginning. Now next is the Undertaker, also easy. So what you may notice that it always uses the same strategies, like there's no involve evolved strategies. And more and more complex strategies like um, you know going around the the enemy. Uh so that's what's a bit boring with uh, RL. Sometimes it finds boring solutions to the problem, which is good in a way, but sometimes you, you want to have like a more spectacular results. Um, there's a way to do this, but we can see this in another video, is to to modify reward function to reward for trying uh, maybe more combos. 
All right, Razor Raymond, also easy. Now this is the first match with uh, two opponents at the same time. It does pretty well. It's harder, but it does pretty well. Um, so it, what's good is that the model generalized well enough to, to tackle two opponents, not be too confused by it. Now two times Razor Raymond. Actually, since since this is in black and white, when it down samples eighty four by eighty four, it cannot distinguish between the two opponents. But I don't think that's a problem. Okay, so this is the final match and it's the uh, only time we're against three opponents at the same time so it, it has a bit more trouble there actually you can win the the match but there's one <coughs> one weird bug is that when i i uh, or problem is when when i run the model from the first state when it by the time it arrives at the seventh state it, uh, it seems to have a harder time than when i start directly with the with this state, the the last match. So as you will see, he uh, he will probably lose. And then lo lose another time. So it's dead. Okay, so now we're gonna try this by directly starting the the last match instead. And normally he's gonna win this way. Um, I don't know. It's is it because when you have a win strike that is. No, it's not because of the win strike. Yeah, for sure. Because in this state, it's, it has a win strike of six. But if either there's a there's a bug in the game or it, it happens to to make the eye harder when uh, when you play for longer uh, or it's just simply a slightly different states and the the model is not robust enough i guess that's more the reason but nevertheless when you run directly a state it wins and when you run from the beginning of the game it, uh, it loses uh, it will, will be, I'll be curious to see if I train it for some more time to see if it's, uh, it's more robust. So it, wins, it won the game. Um, so that's the end of the, the video. I hope you enjoy it. If you have questions, please ask in the comment section down below. Uh, the next video uh, is going to be about pitting two models against each other. So we're going to train Yokozuna on one side and Shawn Michaels on the other and uh, see who wins. Uh, so we get it's uh, but if you want to try it right now uh, the script is already already working it's a model versus model it's on the ritual script project I showed you uh, so that's it uh, thanks for watching and um, uh, please don't forget to subscribe and press the like button if you want